Here I'm going to create a macro with two input parameters, and I'm naming them a certain way so that I can really specify a very important point for you. Here I create the macro, macro name, open paren, I call it in employee no, and the next variable I call salary, close everything up, then say as, and as you can see here, I'm going to update the employee, set salary equal to colon salary, as in the variable coming in. Anytime you see that colon, you go, that's input, those are parameters being passed in. Where employee number equals colon in employee number. So I can actually name my variables the same column names as in the real table, and it's no issue. Of course, when I execute the macro, I'm going to tell it it's employee 2 million and they're making 44444.44 as their salary. When you're passing parameters into a macro during the execute statement, you've got two options, positional parameters or name parameters. We'll discuss those in just a couple of seconds. But let's review the macro because I've got some great arrows here for you. We create the macro and give it a name. We do not mention the word as yet because we've got input parameters. You can see with my red arrows up here that I've got two parameters, in employee number and salary. And we give them their data types and close everything up. And then the blue arrow really points out the keyword as here. So now we know it is on. We have our open paren, time for the macro to run, and we run our macro with our input parameters. Remember, anytime you see a colon, that means I'm referring to the input parameter. Now let's talk about either a named parameter or a positional parameter. As you can see in example one, we're going to execute the macro, and it doesn't matter what order we put the parameters because we actually give it a name, salary equals in employee number equals. So it doesn't matter what position they're in because they're named. Now in our second example, number two, we've got positional parameters. We know that the first parameter is in employee number and the second parameter is salary. So the positioning must be perfect. So we say I want to execute the macro employee number is 2 million and the salary is next. So if they're in the perfect position, that's going to work just fine. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Do you have two different systems that hold your data? Our query tool, the Nexus, now lets you move data freely between them. Great for data movement and for joins, the Nexus is ready to help you cross boundaries. Visit coughingdw.com for more details. Hi, this is Tom Coughing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you are kept up to date on all our videos.